On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Syed is going to show us what's new in the just released version of Visual Studio for Mac. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me is Sayed Hashimi. Hey, Sayed. Hey, man. Welcome back. Yeah, it's great to be back. Always. Now, you were actually on the show a while ago, showing some Visual Studio for Mac tips and tricks, but I wasn't invited, yeah, even though it's right. my show. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like to just kind of take over things and yeah. you know, just do my own thing. So it's know? awesome to have you to, to, to get to be with you yeah, right, <laughs> on the show. Course. Yeah, same, with, same here, man. Yeah, and we're yeah, going right. to talk about Visual Studio for Mac, huh? a new release, yeah. which just became available. Yeah, right. So we uh, we had the 8.3 release going out, and mm -hmm. um, you know go, went out on the same day that uh, Visual Studio 16.3 went out mm -hmm. as well. Cool. And uh, you know we got a lot of really great kind of new features lined up, and I wanted to kind of give uh, a broad overview of some of the new features uh, all across the board, but then wanted to kind of dive into some of the more .NET Core slash ASP.NET Core new features that we got yeah. and do some kind of demos around that. So let's just take that. one second to step back. Um, VS for Mac is obviously Visual Studio running on the Mac. So if you have right. a Mac and you're doing development, yes, you can continue to use Parallels and all the things you've done before, VMs mm -hmm. and whatnot. But this is Visual Studio running on the Mac. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. So. Um, so it's a it's a it's an IDE that's that's been created you know uh, using APIs that are native to that platform, mm -hmm. and uh, there there are a lot of uh, components that we share uh, in Visual Studio for Mac with Visual Studio running on Windows, um, and uh, you know I think the I think the the biggest difference I guess between our good old 20, 30 year old Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac is the the kind of the the breadth of what's supported, mm -hmm. right? You know, in Visual Studio on Windows, you know, there's hundreds of different project types that you can develop on, and uh, you know, a lot of different kind of apps that you can create. Uh, in Visual Studio for Mac, we're primarily uh, focused around you know three kind of workloads as we call them. So that would be uh, mobile apps with mm -hmm. Xamarin, and you know, there's kind of two flavors of that: Xamarin Forms or native iOS and Android. And then you've got uh, game, uh, gaming, and 3D real time with Unity. Yep. And then the the third kind of workload there would be .NET Core right. and ASP.NET Core, and you know, Azure Functions and stuff yep. like that. And um, you know, but one of the uh, but uh, we don't support you know the full breadth of all the different project right. types. You know, those are the ones that we really kind of focus on and. You know, any technology that has an acronym that starts with the letter W isn't supported right. on Visual Studio <laughs> for Mac, right? <laughs> you know, like WCF yeah. or WPF, WTF or you know, those, Windows uh, Forms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it starts right. with a W, it's probably there not going to go. work in uh, Visual Studio for Mac. Yeah. AKA.ms forward slash VS Mac Docs to learn more and get a link yeah. to download it right. if you haven't yet. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, this so that's our little introduction. Our now let's talk about what's yeah, right. new. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what's new uh, for the for mobile development. Uh, we have kind of revamped our XAML editor, and and in our previous release eight point two, we got a brand new XAML editor. This mm -hmm. is the same one that we have in Visual Studio Windows, and uh, we also have uh, Android uh, startup tracing as well in that eight point two release. And uh, for 8.3, the kind of hot thing for mobile is the XAML hot reload. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can, uh, that's for Xamarin Forms. Uh, so you'll kind of edit your Xamarin Forms XAML and will automatically show up in the, uh, in the preview there. So that's what we got. And then uh, for gaming and um, for gaming and 3D real time with Unity, we have uh, much improved uh, IntelliSense for when you're actually writing your code. And uh, there's also some new diagnostics and quick fix tools available okay. for those uh, for those developers as well. So yeah, so that's it for for mobile and uh, gaming and okay. 3D real time. And uh, so yeah, we can focus more on the .NET Core and ASP.NET Core, and that's where we'll do some kind of demos Sounds here. Um, so yeah, so but before we get into the demos, let me tell you about a, a feature which I'm not prepared to demo here on this particular machine is uh, the updates that we have to, to NuGet. So uh, we've kind of revamped our NuGet experience in Visual Studio for Mac in this release. And uh, one kind of big feature that we've added there is the ability to manage NuGet packages at the solution level. So we, oh. we've heard a lot of feedback mm -hmm. on that yeah. one. And uh, so yeah, let's, let's dive into uh, to some of the demos here. Okay. 
So uh, the first thing I wanted to share with you, the, the kind of the, the biggest new feature in my mind is the, uh, the enhanced editors. So in a, in a previous release, we updated the, the C-sharp editor to be the same exact C-sharp editor that's available in VS Windows. Okay. But with this 8.3 release, we've also, uh, we're bringing in the support for the various different web editors. So oh, Razor cool. files, yep. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, so on. So now, so all those files, when you're editing in Visual Studio for Mac, you should get basically the exact same experience that you see in Visual Studio for Windows. Cool. So let me show you an example with a JavaScript file that I have here. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm just basically going to try to retype in some of the content that I already have here at the very top. And we'll just take a look at what the IntelliSense looks like. Okay, so I see I got IntelliSense for Window, add event listener. Oops. So we can see that I'm getting, you know, really great IntelliSense mm -hmm. here, and it's uh, it's actually the same exact IntelliSense that you would get on VS for Windows. So yeah, this is. Uh, I'm not sure if you've tried uh, the. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you've tried out the JavaScript editing experience in Visual Studio for Mac prior to this, but uh, but Maybe this is a so this is a big update here. You know, mm -hmm. uh, let me just do one more here. So yeah, we can see we get all the kind of the yeah, all nice. the same exact uh, editing experience as what you're kind of know and love on mm -hmm. Visual Studio itself. And uh, you know, I'm just I'm just showing the JavaScript experience here, but for CSS files, HTML, Razor, right. so on and this so forth. This kind of highlights, I think, one important thing to understand about Visual Studio for Mac is that it is not a port of Visual Studio for Windows running on the Mac. Right. Right. It is um, <coughs> a lot of work that that came out of Xamarin's uh, Xamarin Studio editor, um, and then uh, the Visual Studio team took over and has tried to straddle the line between it working exactly the same, mm -hmm. but also it is a Mac product and it right. should behave That's like right. a Mac product That's does. Right. So right. yeah. you wouldn't necessarily expect to come over and have it be exactly the same thing. Yeah, that's If that's right. what you want, you should that's probably right. stick to the parallels and running Visual Studio for yep. Windows route. Yep. Um, but it's also, if you're going to do Mac development, you should be familiar with a Mac. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, so exactly. So it kind of yeah, like right. pushes you into the uh -huh. deep end of the pool and says, yeah, it's Visual Studio, but look, if you don't know Mac, this would be an awfully good time <laughs> to learn it. Yeah, that, that, right? that's exactly right. You know, we. Uh, when when we're creating this product, we're always kind of thinking, you know, the developers are kind of Mac oriented mm -hmm. and Mac first developers, right? You know, I think you're kind of you're thinking from the lens of, hey, I've been developing on Windows right. and I've always used Windows, and now I'm just going to buy this Mac and try it out. And you know, there definitely are some some users in that category, but uh, but you know, I think the the majority of them are users who already have a Mac, right. and in the past they were either doing parallels or some sort of a remote connection to yep. a Windows machine, or maybe they were developing in VS Code or whatever. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's one of the kind of big aspects of Visual Studio for Mac is that you know, it's a native IDE yep. for Mac, and we kind of behave, look, and feel just like all the other Mac applications right. do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, so that's a, that's a big thing yeah. for us. And but at the same time, when I'm typing code, mm -hmm. I would kind of expect the same IntelliSense. Yeah, um, that's right. So it's yep. So yeah, it is. Uh, it is pretty tricky, and uh, you know, to be honest with you, with this editor effort, when we first kind of started it up, I was man. The the plans when they kind of told me what the plan was, I was I would I'd be a man. It was really amazing that they're actually able to pull it off. Mm -hmm. So uh, this this is not my area of specialty, so I don't have all the details of it. But uh, essentially, what they did was they took the exact same editors that we have in Visual Studio Windows, and, and those editors have dependencies on uh, WPF and mm -hmm. make a bunch of WPF calls. So what they did was they took that same exact code, and then in the places where it was calling into WPF APIs and classes, they actually just substituted that for uh, Cocoa APIs. So now, you know, whenever they make an update on the Windows side, we can bring it into Visual Studio for mm -hmm. Mac. It's just like a drop-in kind of cool. update, basically. And I was really kind of shocked that they're actually able to pull that off. Uh, really, pretty amazing, I think. Um, so yeah, having a native uh, API, uh, having a native ID is something that's very important, yep. and you know, obviously, it has to fit into that ecosystem. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up. But yeah, that's right. But when, once you get into the IDE, you know, you should be able to do the same types of things and mm -hmm. achieve the same types of goals yeah. that you were that you were doing on the uh, on the Windows side. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Right. All right, so that was uh, that was kind of a uh, a brief update for the editors. 
And uh, I believe we'll have more kind of videos talking about editor specifics as well. So let's go into some other <coughs> let's go into some other new features that we have. All right. So uh, very quick, uh, let me let you know that uh, we've also added, and uh, I believe this was in, in uh, 8.2. We've added the <coughs> the uh, the ASP.NET Core SPA templates, and I can create. Uh, Angular and mm -hmm. React projects directly cool. inside Visual Studio for Mac and you know develop those as you would on Windows. All right, so that was that. And then uh, for 8.3, we've also uh, added support for automatic file nesting. So here I've got index.cshtml mm -hmm. and the .cs file is nested under that. And uh, it, it also works for the like the web related files here. We can see in the, the lib folder I have uh, bootstrap.css and then the the children are under that so okay. so we've got automatic file nesting <coughs> that should kind of help uh, clean up the the UI there uh, as you're kind of working on your your project there so that's kind of one uh, another one that I'm really a big fan of I think this is a kind of a huge productivity boost is uh, being able to select the browser directly in the toolbar oh. uh, so in the past in the past, uh, whenever you were to run or debug your ASP.NET apps, mm -hmm. uh, it would just pick the default system browser. Right. And you know, a lot of people, they leave that as Safari, but then they prefer to debug either in, let's say, Edge or Chrome. Um, so now you can, you can keep your system browser to whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we can change this, uh, let's say, from, from, uh, from Edge to Chrome. And whenever you uh, start without debugging or start debugging, that particular browser would be used, yeah. Cool. And this this is actually slightly different. That, that's the other kind of thing, you know. Visual Studio for Mac has kind of existed for a while, you know, maybe with different names. Mm -hmm. So it has like a history. Um, and in some places, it's actually more feature rich than Visual Studio Windows. And right. this is this is um, this this is one of those areas, I guess. So. Uh, on the on the Visual Studio for Mac side, when you pick a when you pick a browser, it's actually associated with that project. Uh, on the Windows okay. side, it's just kind of a global right. IDE setting there. So, yeah. so it is a there there are little differences there as well. Uh -huh. So that was that one. Um, let's uh, let's move on to the uh, let's move on to the next one then. Uh, we can see that I have uh, multiple projects here in this kind of demo solution that I've created. So one, uh, one piece of feedback that, uh, that I had received when I was doing interviews with customers and reaching out and talking with customers was they asked me, they said, hey, how can I, how can I configure more than one project to run when I run or debug? You know, mm -hmm. in Visual Studio on Windows, you would right-click the solution and say set startup right. projects, yep. right? So uh, this also kind of touches on that previous topic that I said, you know, VS for Mac has its own kind of history, and some, in some cases, it's actually a broader set of features than right. what VS Windows has. Uh, this is an example of that as well. Um, so what we've added is the ability, uh, you can right-click on your solution and say, set startup projects. Okay. And then here, what it does is it prompts you to create a solution run configuration. So that's a concept that doesn't exist on VS Windows. Um, so a solution run configuration, you can, you can create multiple of them, and you can pick which particular projects you want to run and what settings oh, should be cool. applied. But, mm -hmm. uh, but what we've done is, you know, in the past, it was much more difficult to configure more than one project. You'd have to right-click on the solution, go to options, go to run configuration, create a new one. It was kind of involved. But mm -hmm. what we did was we made the entry point essentially the same as Visual Studio on Windows. You right-click the solution, you pick set uh, startup projects. So here, I'll go ahead and uh, create my uh, solution run configuration. And then, uh, and then at this point, uh, you know, I'm prompted for what uh, what projects do I want to run? So I can go ahead and pick these two projects. So these are both uh, web projects. Let me go ahead and click OK. And then we can see in the toolbar, instead of having the name of the project that we had before, now it's got that name of the okay. solution run configuration. And uh, we could still configure the browser under this kind of child uh, item here. Let me yeah, switch okay. this one back to, to Edge. Let me go ahead and start without debugging, and then we'll uh, we'll verify that uh, that those two projects were kind of uh, started in different browsers. Uh, but yeah, I configured both of them right. to go on Edge in this oh, okay. case. Oh, okay. But, but you yeah, could right. You could have uh -huh. had them show up under different. Yeah, browsers. that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So one of them would open up in um, in, in uh, Chrome, and the other one would open up in Edge, or however you uh, configure that one.
All right, so now we can see that the uh, Edge browser was uh, was successfully started, and yeah. uh, both the the websites were kind of brought up and, and started inside beautiful, that. Beautiful websites. So did yeah. you do those yourself? Oh, um, gorgeous. Yeah, I did these. You know, it, <laughs> you, you, you can't imagine how much time I spent on this, especially <laughs> for the uh, from the CSS perspective. Yeah. You know, I, I had to reach out to my buddy Mads Christensen for some <laughs> CSS specific. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like he, the uh, he wasn't available. So this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, so we got that, so let me uh, stop that. All right, so we talked about setting multiple uh, projects on start. So let me show you another kind of feature that, uh, that I think is, is, uh, is really a big, time, a big time feature here. So now, uh, for ASP.NET Core projects, uh, they have a file that's called launchsettings.json. Yep. And that's the file that you, know, you can configure how the application should be launched when you either run or debug your project. And mm -hmm. uh, inside, inside the launch settings.json, we can see that uh, we can set the ASP.NET Core environment, uh, environment variable, and we can also create whatever other environment variables that we want for mm -hmm. our own application. Um, and uh, this is supported uh, not only by the .NET command line, but also by Visual Studio uh, on Windows. And, and uh, now we have support for this in Visual Studio for Mac. Okay. So let me show you how you would edit this. Uh, you could either directly edit the file uh, using the, the editor here in the IDE, uh, or you can right-click your project and go into Options. And then under Run Configuration, that's where we can see the items here. Okay. So for example, if I was to go through and edit this, let's say if I change Contoso to Example. And uh, I could also change, let's say, the ASP.NET Core environment to production, mm -hmm. and then click OK. Then we can see now that my uh, my launch settings.json file was successfully yep. updated as well. So that, cool. that that I think is pretty huge. <coughs> All right. So another uh, another feature which we've added recently for .NET Core console projects uh, is the ability to right click and then publish to a folder. Uh, so, so this is brand new and 8.3 as well. So I can show you that. So uh, right click, publish to folder. Uh, and then it gives you a default location. And that's the same exact default that you would find on Visual Studio. Let me go ahead and publish that one. All right, so now we can see in the, uh, the status bar that it is publishing to the folder. And then when the publish operation completes, we see mm -hmm. the finder show up here. So that, uh, that uh, and then uh, let me show you what the, the reentrant experience for that is. Uh, so after you, after you do that for the first time, uh, then you can publish, and it would remember that uh, particular folder that you published to. And you could also kind of pub you could customize the publish process. Um, we have a publish profile here. It's a pub XML file inside the project. So if you need to yeah, modify okay. the settings mm -hmm. or <coughs> if you need to extend the publish process, that's how you would do it here. And that's the exact same file that Visual Studio itself uses. And um, so yeah, so that's cool. really great. Cool. So that uh, that I think is all for kind of you know like what's new in the 8.3 release. Awesome. We could um, all very helpful. We could talk a little bit about you know kind of what's coming. Sure. And uh, and you know for for this part of the conversation, I can really only kind of represent ASP.NET Core and .NET Core. Are we talking 8.4, 8.x, yeah. 9? Yeah. yeah. So let's short say short term, medium, long. Yeah. Right. So um, so so the the things I'm going to talk about are mostly hopefully going to be in 8.4. Okay. Uh, but you know, obviously, there's some chance that you know some of these features sure. could slip into the to the future releases after that. But uh, but some of the work that we're that we're we're interested in adding support for are for uh, for Blazor projects mm, yeah. for cool uh, for the Blazor server side projects. Does that run any differently in Mac than on Windows, or is it yeah, so yeah, the that's, same um, concept? Yeah, so that's a, that's a really great question. So. Uh, there's kind of two aspects to Blazor. One is I can develop a Blazor application, and then the other is I can publish a Blazor application. Right. All right, so for the first half, developing the Blazor application. So that's actually very similar to, to developing other ASP.NET Core apps. Uh, some of the features that we're missing are integration with File New Project. Mm -hmm. So when I opened up File New Project, you, you didn't see a Blazor option there. So we're going to go ahead and add that option. Okay. And then uh, and then the other missing feature there is editor support. So uh, for regular ASP.NET Core apps, the, the extension for the file is CSHTML. 
for the Blazor apps, there are .razor files, and there's some additional syntax in there. So uh, we're working on getting the, the editor support for those Blazor files. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then outside of that, most of the features already do work. Like you can build, run, and debug uh, Blazor server-side projects even before 8.3 in right. Visual Studio for okay. Mac. Uh, and then on the, on the publish side, there are some significant enhancements that need to be made. Um, so when you publish to, let's say, Azure App Service, mm -hmm. uh, when you use a Blazor server-side application, it's highly recommended uh, that you also create a SignalR service in Azure. Um, because with the Blazor server-side, when you have a user connect to it, uh, there's a WebSocket that's opened. And uh, on the Azure App Service, you, know, you don't want the same website that's actually serving your web content to also handle all these WebSockets. Okay. It's not going to really scale that well, right? So the recommendation is publish your web app to App Service and then also create an associated SignalR service. And then the SignalR service will handle all the WebSockets and then they can kind of scale independently. So that's what we're working on for publish. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's the kind of publish update. And then <coughs> uh, beyond that, we're probably going to look at things like um, there will be some additional kind of publish enhancements, I think, that are going to come out as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, some of the kind of top items would be uh, adding authentication to the file new project. So today in VS on Windows, you can say, I want to create a web app, right. and I want individual auth, and you know, I want to store the, the users in-app. Uh, and then they also have some, some, uh, some cloud options there as well. Uh, so we're planning on adding uh, the auth support to new project dialog. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and then after that, um, the, the, kind of, the, the kind of big missing feature I, in my mind is uh, scaffolding. Okay. So we don't have scaffolding support in the IDE today and on the, on the Mac side. Uh, but you know, we do have, you can, you can always run those from the command line today, but it's pretty verbose yeah. uh, to type out all the scaffolding commands. Um, so yeah, so I think after we, after we add uh, you know, Blazor server-side dev and publish support, and then add auth to new project, and then add scaffolding, then I think you know, all the kind of major kind of rocks are pretty much taken care of. And then from there, we can just try and basically uh, uh, stay in sync with new features coming into VS on Windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the that's the kind of overall plan. Cool. So yeah, right. So Very that's what cool. I got. All right. Thanks yeah. for coming on and showing us this. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Always uh, always good to be here. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember uh, aka.msvsmacdocs to learn more. Go get yourself Visual Studio for Mac. Play around with it. Let these guys know what you think. And we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.